are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my... I was going to say, welcome back to my reading. Welcome back to my channel, where I talk about reading. It's time for Friday Reads, and I have had a bailing massacre of a week, so I'm in a good mood. The first one was the one I was the most excited about last week. Nino Haritschvili's The Eighth Life. This was not a Sean book at all. I read 50 pages, and the character development was so weak. Uh, in 50 pages, I didn't feel one emotion about any of the characters and there was enough time where I should have but I got a lot of dull recitation of Georgian and Russian history through the mouths of these characters and through some rather dull exposition and I th checked on Goodreads to see what people were complaining about and people were complaining about lack of character development and dull expository history lessons. And as much as I'm interested in history, I'm a heck of a lot more interested in fully-fledged characters. And that is why I bailed. I think that if you don't care about character development and you like a good story, maybe this story was good, but stories suck without characters to carry the story along. And this was shaping up to be cutout characters uh, rather than anything three-dimensional. And I also bailed, and I was kind of sad about this one, on Maud's Line by Margaret Verbal. This was awful. I couldn't believe how terrible it got before I bailed. I got it to the end of chapter 2, which was page 82, and I really liked the main character, Maud. She was well-developed enough, and some of the other characters showed promise of being, you know, three-dimensional characters. So it wasn't that. It was that... None of the characters were reacting to the ominous things that were happening in the story, and that drives me crazy. There was, like, mutilated animals. The story opens with a cow that was um, uh, f maimed, and then later a dog is mutilated and, dis and left on the dining room table, and the characters come in, and then, in an almost jokey way, they think about how to clean it up and how to bury it so that the father doesn't know. And then they start talking about their love lives. I mean, that kind of thing just drives me crazy. It was like, la la la, we, we cleaned all the dog blood off the table. And there's a few uh, other blood matter and brain tissue. And it's all been dealt with. So now let me pine for my love. Oh, I just couldn't, can't stand that kind of shit. So this, terrible. Uh, similarly, I have bailed. This is the only bail I was expecting. <laughs> what I made my Friday reads last week, which was Edward Danticat's latest collection of short stories is also no good. I, this was a buddy read with Joe. We buddy read and were deeply, deeply underwhelmed by the first three stories and we cashed in our chips and we have moving on. If you like Aminata Forna, these stories are like that. There's lots of social political relevance to the st people's lives, but it has all the emotional depth of a journalistic article in a magazine. I didn't give a you-know-what about anything I read. And the last one was about somebody dying of AIDS, and I just didn't care. It was just dry, dull, lifeless stories, so no thank you. The only thing I've liked by her is her debut novel. I should reread that one. And I wonder if any of her other novels are good. She's not much of a short story writer. Certainly this one was bad. Breath Eyes Memory was, I thought, tremendous. And I have not tried. I didn't mind Crick Rack, but it wasn't very good. And the, her book about death, her essays were awful. So I don't, I don't know if she's a one-hit wonder or not. Uh, so those are my bales. And so because of all those bales, I'm... I was going to say knee-deep. No, I'm about an inch deep into a bunch of new stuff. So let's see, what have I started? I have started three new books. This is the first of my reads for my my husband puts me onto a shelf uh, readathon this year. Miriam Taves's novel, Irma Voth. Where does this fit within her oeuvre? I haven't bothered to check. 2011's A Complicated Kindness was 2004 and 
Oh, my puny sorrows was 2014, so this is just three years before that. It's, I'm enjoying it. It's a little bit wonky, which I like and which she does well. Uh, it's about a young, sassy Mennonite woman, 19 or 18 at the beginning, and she is in a Mennonite colony in Mexico, and she gets married against her family's wishes to a Mexican. And then the story goes all... Kind of madcap. There's a Mexican filmmaker who moves in next door and she gets involved with that. That's where I'm at. But it, the writing is fabulous. The humor is delicious. And it feels so good to sink my teeth into a Miriam Taves novel after all the crap I've been subjecting myself to. And I treated myself. It was actually a birthday gift. Today's my birthday. I don't care, but it's my birthday. Uh, a birthday present for my parents because I have good reason for needing to get into shape. They got me a exercise bicycle for my apartment here in Tokyo with a reading desk. I'll put a picture in here. I decided that I was going to dedicate one audiobook to my exercise bicycle routine, which I can only listen to while I'm on the bike thinking that may be an added motivation for using it. So I started, and I am enjoying it so much that I actually went ahead and got the hardcover book from Amazon Japan, and it just came about an hour ago. Tupelo Hasman's Gods with a Little G. And look at this cover. It is a fabulous cover. Too bad about the cat on the cover, but otherwise it's fabulous. Just kidding, Doris. <laughs> I love the writing. I don't know how I feel about the novel yet. It's too early, but the writing is divine. And the audio is really good, too. So now I can follow along if I choose. I don't think I can read while I'm on the exercise bike. Listening to audio is okay. When I read and I'm holding a book, I think I would slow right down. And I'm already pedaling too slowly to make much of a difference yet. But I'll work up to it. This is a 2019 novel, and I'm hard-pressed to tell you what it's about. It's set in a small California town that is overrun by fundamentalist Christians, and that sounds like a fate worse than death, and the main character is uh, rebellious. And she is also grieving her mother, and it's really compelling. The writing is just fantastic. Let me read you the opening paragraph. If you were flying in a plane over Rosary, California, the first thing you'd see is me, a skinny white girl with messy hair and a big backpack, waving you on. Keep going, I'd say. The second thing you'd see on an afternoon when school was just out and the wind was starting to shift would be teenagers closing in on a tire yard like bits of metal pulling to a magnet. Until we were all gathered there, negative and positive, and jumping from the force of being near each other. I'm really loving it so far. I will have more to say. And this is a good place to pause and say that, and some of you have learned your lesson the hard way. I usually start out with a book feeling really enthusiastic, like, like I did with this one and this one and pretty much every other book. And it's very possible that I will suddenly start hating this and bail on it by next week. So don't buy the book on my preliminary <laughs> reaction to it. Wait until I've finished it. However, um, I also know I have at least a few subscribers. You know who you are that watch my channel for the express purpose of finding out what I hate because those are the books that you will probably love. But even so, you should still wait until I've finished it. So, yes, my preliminary reaction is very enthusiastic. And I have started on ebook on Scribd, a Canadian novel, and I can't remember. Again, it was somebody on Twitter mentioned it. I found out that I had it on Scribd, bookmarked it, and decided to give it a try. It's basically a novella. It is called Malagash by Joey Como. Como. I didn't check the pronunciation until I got to the editing phase, and it's Joey Como. And it is really tugging on my heartstrings already, which is a good sign. That's always the sign of a Sean book. If I'm engaged emotionally from the first chapter, and I was with this one, I'm a quarter of the way through it, and it is set on Malagash, which apparently is a small town on the north shore of Nova Scotia in Canada. And the family have relocated there so that the father 
the protagonist, I don't know how old she is. She's old enough to be a computer whiz. Teenager, I'm guessing. She must be a teenager. Her father, who's not very old, is dying. He wants to die in his hometown near his mother. So the whole family's moved up for that purpose. And it's funny and poignant. And Sunday is the main character, this teenage computer whiz, because she is secretly recording her father with her smartphone because she wants to remember his voice. And he's got a wonderful sense of humor and is a real character. He's not just a person dying on the bed. He's just really present in the novel. And then she has this strange idea of how to prolong his existence in life using these recorded messages that involves uh, computer hacking stuff. It sounds crazy and it is crazy, but it's emotionally compelling and I love it so far. I had never heard of Joey Como. Uh, his other novels are called Lockpick Pornography. I think I've heard that title and Overqualified. And he uh, lives in Toronto, but I'm assuming he may come from the Maritimes. Both of these have been real surprises because I went in with no expectation and was just grabbed uh, from the get-go. So those are what I've started. And I finished the Barbara Pym, Crampton Hodnett. I absolutely loved it. It is now on the upper tier. I now have four Pims on the upper tier. And if I don't name them, you're going to ask me in the comments. So they are... Some Tame Gazelle, A Glass of Blessings, No Fond Return of Love, and now Crampton Hodnet. Those are my top four Barbara Pims. I will be doing a full review. And in the next week, I will probably start a couple. I'll, I'll start something to replace the Pim. I haven't chosen yet, so I have nothing to tell you. You'll just have to wait. Joe and I have already chosen a replacement for the Edwidge Danticat, and that is Kelly Link's collection from a few years ago, Get in Trouble. And I have this gorgeous hardcover that I got for apparently $8 here in Tokyo, probably. And really heavy paper and a really lovely dust jacket that just feels so good in my hands. So I hope the book's good. I've heard mostly positive, I think, 2015. So we'll be starting that next week. So yes, it's been a mixed bag, but I'm just having a great time. Having a great time falling in love with books, falling out of love with books, and just being a book slut. May it continue. Thanks for watching. Oh.